Well, I am officially now a rent vester. So recently I moved. So I was on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria and I've now moved to uh, Brighton in Victoria. So just closer to the city for anyone who knows that coastline. Yeah, buddy, right next to me. Yeah, well, I must admit you were actually a big reason for the move. So I think I'll start from here because anytime I tell someone, the first question I get is like, well, why did why? you do it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know how you like had the envy of, oh, you know, owning the home, being in the burbs, being this like family thing? Yes. Well, as Melbourne started to open up, I had FOMO on the other side of like, oh, well, Grant went for dinner with these guys. <laughs> Dude, it was totally, yeah. I did go out a lot. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and then there'd be like a business event on and I'm like, oh. It, that happened. That, I didn't go to that. <laughs> and like the coffee in my area is not very good. Wait, <laughs> hang on. The, that was the greatest warm milk I've ever had. Yeah, I mean, you have to ask for a coffee though <laughs> and then they just give you a cup of warm milk. It's like, is there even coffee? <laughs> we won't go into the local cafe I, I am referring to. Though. That's there. probably a... Yeah, but I, I started to really look at things and I'm going, I think I'm missing out on a, a number of experiences that would be very, very beneficial to the areas of my life that are important. And don't get me wrong, really nice house, really nice area, but I think that is somewhere that I would more want to settle down when I'm finished trying to strive in business, not necessarily be there while I'm trying to strive in business. I think it would be, it's like environment matters. Totally. And how have, like, so you've now moved to Brighton and you're now renting, but you do get this very interesting benefit of still having the place that you've basically paid off a little bit further down on the Mornington Peninsula, which I, I find fascinating because this is, again, Grant on the outside of the window going, oh, that's, that's, that sounds nice. <laughs> so what is this? Yeah, so there's some interesting rules on this that people may not be aware of. If you, um, let's say you you lived in a house as your principal place of residence and then you go rent somewhere else, you actually get six years before that officially turns into what they would say is like an in investment property. So I can rent for six years and still claim that house as um, my principal place of residence. And why that's important is because there's tax-free capital growth available on it. So if an investment property uh, goes up, you have to pay capital gains tax. But if your principal place of residence goes up in value, you don't pay any capital gains tax so, uh, for that six year window. And we get to take that. Noting if we buy another house and we say that is our principal place of residence, that would change. Right? So you can only have one principal place of residence. You can't just keep stacking them up in that way. <clears throat> so what we're actually doing just to break that one down further is that we've kept the place on the Mornington Peninsula. So, and we've got tenants in there now, which it's, it's going really well. We've got great tenants in there. It's like gone all smoothly. And we decided to keep that property because, well, I believe in the area a lot. I really do. Like there's some really quality schools. It's a very Man. desirable location. Um, the rent in it is very reasonable. Like it didn't make sense to me to sell the property. I actually think it's a great addition to our portfolio. Um, the second thing that had kind of occurred here is like, as much as I would have loved to buy in Brighton, and this is pure opinion and speculation, do not act on this advice, although it's interesting how things are playing out. Interesting. Um, I couldn't find anything that I wanted to buy that I felt was good value. Yeah. So the market was a bit crazy in the area that's here, and I actually think there'll be a better opportunity to either like acquire uh, either land, a knockdown rebuild, a renovator, or the house I want if I'm a little bit patient here and be a little bit strategic. So long-term, I'll likely buy in this area, but I'm being um, diligent because for where I'm at right now, the next house I buy in, I, I want to get like 10 years out of it longer. Mm. So it's like, I don't want to just buy a, this'll do. I want to buy I, something where, best. yeah, this is the place we're going to raise our family. Yeah. And I don't want to have to buy and sell and then buy and sell because of things like stamp duty and just the pain and process of moving. Now, how often have you been on the real estate app with the filter of Brighton to buy a house since you've moved in? <laughs> that's actually funny. I think you, you, that's a loaded question, though. <laughs> I, totally. I watched this YouTube video about uh, quitting social media, and like the first thing they said to do is like go to the uh, Apple Screen Time thing and um, 
go like, how much time do you actually spend on social media now? And I was like, God, oh, you know, this is going to tell me how much time I spend on Slack and YouTube and like Facebook and all that stuff. And like my, I think, so my number one app was Slack. No surprise. surprise. My number two app was uh, podcasts. No surprise. No surprise. And then my number three was actually (laughs) realestate.com.au. I'm like, uh, well, first off, I was actually happy I don't spend that much time on social media (laughs) as in comparison. Celebration. But then I was like, I think real estate dot co- like dot com is that social media for grown ups? Uh, that is or maybe that, that is, is social media. That is social media for grown ups. <laughs> it's like uh, what what are we we were joking with Aaron around them building like a community feature on real estate where you could like like share it and like comment on it and all these kind of things. I'm like, nice I'd never house. Leave. yeah, I'd never leave. <laughs> I'll be on real estate just like talking to everyone. Like, oh my god, have like groups and stuff. But yeah, that is uh, I find this fascinating because it is still like that other argument of going investing, owning your own home, but also the opportunities of owning your own home and moving to being a rent investor and still being able to get the benefits of it. And it always comes back down to the point that you and I say, Charlie, which is as long as you understand the games that you are in, you can always maximize the outcome. Because if you didn't know that you could utilize the that six years of tax-free growth, the scenario might have been different. You might have sold out. You might not have held on to Would've. it. Would no, have. know I've- that you- would have sold it if it wasn't for that rule. Hey, fellow business owner, if this topic and value-packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into being a full-stack business owner, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.